Hi, it's Philip Byrne for Phonescoop.com, and today I'm looking at the Casio G's One Ravine, which is a rugged, waterproof phone, available now from Verizon Wireless. Now the G's One Ravine is a thick, ruggedized phone. It's got this sort of rubberized backing with a nice grippy surface. It's a little bit larger than your average clamshell phone is going to be. But as far as rugged phones go, I think this phone makes it a little bit less obvious than most of its predecessors that you're looking at a phone that meets military specifications for water resistance, for dust, shock, vibrations, salt fog, temperature, humidity, pretty much everything you could throw at it. I definitely like the large buttons. The layout was easy to use even when I had gloves on. It's got this big push to talk button here on the side. And if you're not going to use the walkie-talkie feature, you can set that PTT button to act as any sort of feature you like. You can assign any of the apps on the phone to work with that button. It's got a few nice outdoorsy type features. For instance, you can simply hold down this button here and you get the flash which can act as a flashlight, which is definitely a useful feature. And the phone also uses the G's Gear Outdoor apps. And a lot of these will even show up on that external screen. So here I'm loading up the compass. You can see with the flip open, I do get a nice accurate compass that can tell me my heading somewhat more precisely. But even with the flip closed, you still get a compass on the external screen. Now that external screen is a very low resolution monochrome. It isn't very useful for most features. You can't read text messages on it. You don't get navigation directions from VZ Navigator. But Casio and Verizon do try to make use of it for some of the G's Gear apps. Here you can see it works with the pedometer. It works with the built-in thermometer. You can also use the astral calendar to check phases of the moon. So my biggest problem with the G's One Ravine is the menu really hasn't changed significantly in the four years that I've been looking at these G's One phones. For some reason, Verizon still thinks of this as mostly a feature phone. So it gets your classic Verizon feature phone menu options. You have the media center here and all of the confusing menus. And it really doesn't put the outdoor features, the real rugged features, front and center. I wish that it made a much bigger deal out of those features. I wish that you could customize this menu layout a little bit more. You can swap out these icons and rearrange them as you like. But you really only get to swap out less than half of what you see here. And you can't break up this G's Gear app into its component features. You can only have the G's Gear on the main menu. You can't make a separate menu option, say, for the compass or for the pedometer or any one of these apps more specifically. Now, these apps were sort of fun to play with, but in a lot of ways, they were not very useful. For instance, right now, my thermostat says it's a nice 68 degrees in this room, and the thermometer here says I'm in the 80s. Here you can see that astro calendar again for the lunar phases from the inside. And you can even check to see exactly when the moon is going to be either a new moon, full moon, whatever you like. Now the G's Gear app does come with this sort of strange and not entirely useful feature where you can shake it to switch to the next G's Gear app. I don't quite see how this would be useful, but it is sort of an interesting gimmick nonetheless. Here's the G's Gear Stargazer app. Unfortunately, this does tie into the GPS, but not the compass or the accelerometer on the phone. So it can't give you a, an automatic heading. You sort of have to point at the right spot in the sky and then scroll around using the navigation pad 
to find the stars of the constellations you like. So it's not entirely useless, it's still an interesting app to play with, but it's not as useful as the Google Sky Map you'll find, the Google Sky Map you'll find on an Android phone or a more advanced application. So in the end, I really just wish Verizon and Casio had focused on the few key features that are going to be most important to this phone's audience. For instance, the camera on this phone was just horrible. The pictures were lousy, video was even worse, but I know that Casio can make a good waterproof camera phone because the Casio Exilim is a good waterproof camera phone also available on Verizon. Other features like the music player, which might be useful for folks who want to exercise and run outdoors with this nice waterproof phone, was just way too dated and basic. This is the same exact music player that you would have found on this phone years and years ago. And nothing's really improved. I could have done away with the very simple mobile web browser, with some of the advanced email features on this phone, and with most of the features that require a data connection, if I could have only had a much better camera, a slightly better music player, and better access to the outdoor features that I like the most. But otherwise, this is a nice rugged phone. It certainly gets the job done. And you can just beat the crap out of it. For PhoneScoop.com, this is Philip Byrne.